the inquiry is is brought about because of devotion. It may feel like curiosity or it may just feel like I have to ask, you know, I have to do this or whatever. But it's devotion by yourself to know yourself in a conscious manner. And the only thing that I have ever found that has a direct relationship to that is inquiry. There are many fine practices, and I don't discourage any of them that are healthy, uh, but I have not found that they actually have a direct relationship with awakening. Is we can think that we can think that meditation does, but we also know that there are people that meditate all their lives and and never notice what's always here. And um, they have uh, the, the, m most people who are dedicated to will have glimpses, which means that they're already awake to begin with, and uh, that the demanding. Fredism over here. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Um, dies down for a moment, and in the absence of that cry for attention, um, in the absence of the fretting, the active fretting, uh, then awakeness has to show itself because it's all this. It's all there is to begin with, and the fredness is just like on top of it like uh, layered on top of it. Devotion uh, is not something to be looked down on. And I know that uh, some non-dualists can because it's the, it, it's, it, it seems futile from, a, from, the, from the bubble of self-reflection which is where most long-term non-dualists are. And uh, so from the bubble of self-reflection, it looks like that this is the only way, uh, even though it's not working presently, <laughs> through the one who's calling the devotion uh, um, the, the less intellectual way. And it is a less intellectual. It's gut. It's just it's just pure spirit to spirit. It's it's it imparts feeling, not the distinct knowledge, and the feeling of this is the closest we'll ever get to direct. You can't get to one on none, so. <laughs> going to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And so I think that I always say that, that inquiry is the only practice that I, I, I notice. That's not true. There is the other way, which is, which is much shorter and more efficient. It's just few can, can pull it off. And that's just... Uh, you know, instant surrender to this. Most of us are here because we found this disagreeable. And we're trying to make this become more agreeable. If we're not, even if we can't change this, which we still want to, but if we, even if we can't change this, we can get this to where it's hopefully more agreeable with it. But what we have to remember is that we have to be careful with the words like surrender because it does, it, it certainly seems to be dualistic because it sounds like I've got to surrender to God. And that was my word for a long time. And when I was um, in early awakening and um, I was, was speaking non-dual, was teaching non-duality in AA through AA language, best I could. And that increased the letter level of 
a parent or assumed separation even more. But there's no one to surrender and there's nothing to surrender to really. But within the world of experience, we can say that it is actually that this consciousness, we could call it uh, relativity, because it's the experience of relativity, and that it's consciousness that has to surrender. Oh, excuse me, it's relativity. Uh, pardon me, God Almighty, it's the absolute that has to surrender to the relative. There's no one here. Fred can't do it. Bo can't do it. No Fred, no Bo, no room full of people, just one thing. And uh, uh, so we have an aspect, we have aspects of the one thing, which is the appearance of relativity and the certainty of the absolute. And the absolute, one might say, is very sold on itself that in the same way the relative is, is that it's, it's, the relative says it's my way or the highway and so does the absolute so, sort of. So what we have to do is realize that both of those pulls are false. They're legitimate pulls, but they're not representative of truth. They're really representative of ego settling in to the purity of the absolute and settling into the solidity of relativity. And that uh, that ego says that it's right. But in truth, the absolute has to, which is the only thing there is. It's the only way that experiencing can happen. We experience through relativity, but the only way that experience can happen is the absolute has to be here to begin with. So the absolute has to surrender to relativity, and that's the rub. The absolute has to surrender to this. And there's not really a drawing, uh, you know, a line to draw there, but it feels like there's a line to, to draw there because it feels like relativity and absolute are different. And well, I mean, they are different. They're just different aspects of the same one thing. So, for relativity to surrender, and we could call it the body-mind of relativity, surrenders to the world of relativity as it is. And it's the body, when I say body-mind, it's just this just a touch point. It's really relativity. I mean, absolute that has to experience, has to surrender to this, to this relativity because I don't have any control over it. I mean, it's not like if I don't like what's happening, it doesn't change anything. If I watch the news and see something on Gaza, there's going to be something pulled and moved from one side or the other at the moment. And, uh, but not for our whiteness. Now, whiteness is always okay. And that just doesn't sound very exciting. And on one level, it's not very exciting. But excitement is like this. And that's not what we're after. What we what we think we're after is this. I just want to hit the peak, stay right there. Oh, it was really great. I remember it. And it, that obviously can't happen there it, it, for a peak there's a valley for a peak there's an opposite and uh, there is no opposite to okayness and that's where the, the the term bliss really comes in is that sometimes it can be experienced by a unit as bliss in the body and the mind Bliss as we would normally define it as being ha. But in truth, bliss is the unchangeable. 
recognizing the unchangeable. It's consciousness recognizing the absolute and the absolute noting, noticing consciousness simultaneously. So there's really, really no opposites. There's nothing to bring you down. There's no, there's no disappointment from okayness. The great okayness is I love, love to call it because it's what it feels like. I mean, just feel like okay. It feels like okay. 